we're live all right let me go do my thing in here let's see hmm. well here it comes okay let's see here we go we got three people in the house sound is good Burr Malloy, haven't seen you in a long time. It's good to see you. Naz Khan, good to see you. Patricia Satchwell, thank you for your continued love and support and contribution. So many of you. Uh, Norma, Devereaux, Cricket Holden, Lisa Hines, Guerrero Del Rio, Katarina, Michael Gabe, Michelle Good, uh, Kathy Waldowski, Doreen Kennedy, Moni Josie from Australia. I uh, hadn't seen that name before. Yusuf Khan. Doug Watrob Watrobsky, Kathy Waldowski, Anna Garcia, Anna Marie Garcia, up from Wyoming. Uh, Wendy Kirkwood from Queensland. Carla Sh Carl Schwartz, thank you for all your kind messages and support. Zach Bergen, Karen Starr, Karen Starr, poetess Claire Louise Lynam, Rand Sprague. I've got twenty nine people in the house. They're coming in too fast to name them all. Thank you for all your love and support and contributions for keeping us going up to this point. This is a vortex. It's an energy called Sology. It's not me. It's not our distinguished guest. It's not Morgan. It's all of us. Um, we're just adding frequencies to an ever-expanding vibration. Hello, Wendy Wu. Uh, if these shows resonate with you, please share so we can uh, stay above the algorithms of Facebook. Hello, Kathleen Russell, San Antonio, Texas. Deonda plays in the house. Moni Jowsey says she's a big fan of Hone. So let's go ahead and formally roll the show out. It's been a long time coming. Hello, East Texas. Um, haven't been able to haven't been able to hook up. Uh, with Hone for a while, but let's welcome back Soul Speaks 5D Hone Edmonds, world traveler and tango expert in the making. <laughs> welcome back. It's good to see you. It's good to see you. I hope you and your lovely uh, partner are doing very, very well. I know you are. Thank you so much, Todd. Thank you, and you're very welcome. <clears throat> you know, we had a, a unique conversation, which is uh, interesting on uh, Soul Speaks 5D, 800 plus episodes. I say you had a unique conversation, uh, but it was. It was a uh, very interesting. We talked about uh, your uh, near death experience. Well, it was a death experience and life experience, and we talked about a lot of things. You have a really fresh, uh, unique perspective. And I'd like to uh, just get into a little bit. There's been a lot of discussion since January 1st, in particular, about how fast everything's moving and expanding. And um, I don't know, the uh, disintegration of any veils whatsoever. Of course, the veils being our own veils, uh, primarily. But uh, I don't know, what's it look like to you? I know you've done a lot. You were in uh, New Zealand in January in your annual uh, track into your homeland, into the native territory. Uh, but what's it been like? Uh, you've got a good perspective because you've got both the isolation in the pureness of Mother Nature and Gaia and also out in the world a little bit, traveling around. What's what's it look like to you? What's it been like for the, la the last few weeks? Uh, 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 like going to a pharmacy, a natural mother nature pharmacy, uh, earth Gaia pharmacy, when you go uh, deep into the wilderness, particularly in, a, in, in one of the most beautiful places on the planet, um, back there in New Zealand of um, what we call Te Uruwera, Lake Waikare um, it, It's all pureness, it's all native. Uh, there is... Uh, uh, there is no connection whatsoever to the matrix. Uh, there's no electricity. There's no. Um, there's no internet. No Wi-Fi. Um, it's a big challenge for many people that came onto the retreat. Um, uh, but I, I think that once they uh, had the courage to to cross over uh, over that veil into um, and, and, and until they got themselves comfortable 
uh, being in nature. Uh, I mean, it, it's something that our ancestors have done for thousands and thousands of years. Um, so it's almost like a cleansing whereby uh, it's uh, reacquainting our soul to be, being a, uh, uh, to being in the wilderness and uh, of stillness, of purity, of calmness, uh, of, of being with the, the, the stars at night time, uh, the sun during the day. No, there's no human noise, there's no cars, there's no uh, machines, there's uh, no buildings. Um, it's, all, it's all wilderness. And, uh, uh, and it's just an incredible experience. And I just love seeing the, 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 the hearts of those that attend such a retreat. Um, you know, just to feel fulfilled and to feel totally blown away when they when they are there. And um, time goes so fast, even though there is no time there. And mm. um, and and um, yeah, it's 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 just so replenishing, so rejuvenating. So there's there's no there's no civilization, so to speak, of or remnants of civilization out there. You don't even have porta potties. <laughs> I guess no, there's do. nothing, nothing whatsoever. We we <laughs> we we do we we do we do have a we do have a uh a, a there or or but that's not porter. It's not porter as such. Um, but <clears throat> yeah, it's 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 all it's all back to thousands of years ago. Wow. And let me ask you. So you have people, all kinds of different people, uh, go out there. Does anybody? Just, I mean, is it too much for for? Uh, uh, has anybody just said, "I got to get out of here. I got to go back to what I know, my comfort mm. zone." Mm. Um, <clears throat> none, none, to be honest. Oh, that's cool. Uh, I, I think there's probably a lot of in, uh, intrepidation. There's a lot of um, a fear for some that. Uh, have intentions of, of doing the retreat and God bless them all those but there were some that did pull out um, but um, I think in hindsight knowing from the reports of those that did the retreat who posted um, reviews and of the experiences there and some of the photos which highlighted their um, the adventures that they did um, those that didn't end up coming on 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 the retreat um felt like they wish they should have come if you know yeah. what i mean yeah yeah and so you spend a month there uh hosting three or four different groups and then you come out into you come back into which i know you've done it before but you come back into uh uh what the real world <laughs> the illusion of world i don't know how to describe it but then you have to come uh, back into to civilization how does that feel is there like a shock to your system i mean do you or do you feel more balanced and centered and you can just handle whatever comes um i i call it uncivilization when we come back to uncivilization because there's a world of uh chaos chaos um there's a world of of ego high expectations you see it when you come out of the wilderness um people are always in the mindset of the future getting ahead um being part of a competition it's all about a competition being ahead of the next person knowing more than the next person um uh, and that is an that's an aspect that we 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 see uh when when you come out because you're cleanse you're you're, you feel in harmony. It's very difficult, though, to continue that harmonic vibration on after you come out. And it's always important that I say to those that come on the retreats to stay in your bubble, to stay in your oasis, yeah. um, to not be so uh, affected by the world and by the... Uh, 
the unconscious nature of, of those who are caught up in the world or living in the world of um, confusion or apathy or denial or um, uh, uh, just being in the cl- under the cloud of the, of, of the illusion that um, uh, they find themselves into. But there is a way out. Yeah. There is always a way out. And it takes it takes a lot of courage, but yeah, I, I, I generally call coming out of the wilderness being the wilderness is is civilized. Yeah. That is civil that is civilization in its most purest form, and so we're coming out of civilization back into uncivilization. Now, do you guys have like a, a daily routine? I mean, do you have like rituals, ceremonies, that type of thing when you're there? Uh, well, we. Uh, that we, we don't. I try not to put too much emphasis on having a, a formalized structure in the wilderness because the, those that come in, in onto onto the retreat have um, uh, their own. Uh, you, we've got to give them time to settle in, and so if if we put too much uh, strictness or stringency on on what's expected of them in the retreat. I generally like to go the other way by saying there's nothing expected of them. Yeah. There's um, because we're in a place of timelessness. Uh, there's uh, I generally would prefer to give them you know two or three days just to allow their own soul to get into that harmonic nature of their vibration of what it's like being in the wilderness because it's it's an enormous change for 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 not just for um, um, uh, souls who have been searching, but also for those who have been unconscious for a long time and are getting themselves acquainted to uh, what it's like in their new vibration of, of this is this is how I'm meant to be. This is how life is meant to be. And so it's just a matter of just um, uh, getting allowing them to uh, to get themselves acquainted into nature into the rhythm of nature just being uh um able to feel how beautiful it is with the nature of the birds of the water of the of the of the, of the other creatures of, of the living at night and in, 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 in a forest um that's quite a big challenge for a lot of people i bet it would be uh, i bet it would be i mean do you get any uh visitors be they sentient beings of uh <laughs> An earth nature or galactic nature or divine essence nature, ancestral nature. Do you, do you, do, do, I'm sure you must have some some civilized, uh, you know, I don't want to say otherworldly, but um, not normal things, at least not up to this point. It's becoming more and more normal. But do you guys have some uh, some experiences there? I mean, do you? Do you um, uh, I guess it's I guess it's um uh, it's uh, it centers around the uh um whether they're um uh i mean there are physical creatures of course i mean at night time you get you get possums you get um you hear kiwi at night which is our uh, our native uh bird it's a, it's one of our um, national symbols symbols which is the kiwi you hear them screeching at night time calling at night time you hear possums above you in the trees and sometimes they're running around your tent um it didn't happen on this retreat but on the last one you know you'd wake up in the morning and you'd find dead fresh deer tracks around your tent you think well they weren't there last night so we must have had several deer coming through your through right. your campsite through the night and here's these fresh deer tracks there um but no but no lions and tigers or bears right <laughs> no way no it's no, there's no, nothing, nothing of that like nature it. no and uh, that's quite nice to know yeah so i mean do you see some people go through some serious expansion while they're there I oh mean, very definitely yeah very definitely yeah. i mean it's it's a it's a heavy scene for for a lot of people because it's all about that adjustment back into uh, what what life um uh, is like and and uh and it's um it's it's a cosmic adjustment. It's a vibrational adjustment. It's an orgasmic adjustment. 
Um, and when they get themselves in, into that field of, of harmony, that that stillness of what it's like there, um, they 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 really enthrall in it for the rest of the retreat there on. Yeah. Now you're uh, you are native Maori tribe, right? Maori. Perfect. I, 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 I did Perfect. say it right, <laughs> even with my Texas accent. Uh, so you're native there. Uh, and, uh, I know we talked about this a little bit, but how, how has that, and I know that the near death experience was, was the huge catalyst, uh, but how has the, the, uh, indigenous, um, culture affected you? I mean, what influence has that had on you? Um, I think there's been many effects um, in, in both the physical and the non-physical. Um, in, in regards to uh, the um, the beliefs of our of our indigenous people, it was no different to the beliefs of of our indigenous cousins in the Americas and our indigenous cousins in the in the South and Central American region, in places like in in, in, in Europe and Siberia and Asia. Um, that have always had a connection with um, uh, in terms of the, the guidance that that we or they get from um, the higher dimensions mm. uh, we, we're talking uh, we're talking about not so we're not talking about the third dimension um, right we're right. we're we're not even talking as much about the fourth dimension. But when we're talking about the fifth dimensions from the Pleiades through Sirius, through Arcturus, through uh, Orion, through Andromeda, uh, wow. through, uh, um, the Ple uh, through Epsilon, Lyra, Lyra, Vega, um, those dimensions there is where that vibration has always been held in high regard in, in those indigenous cultures, but also the, especially the Maori culture. I mean, the Maori culture knew of those dimensions, um, and they still hold those dimensions as sacrosanct um, uh, because they knew um, equally as much as other indigenous cultures that those dimensions were were prevalent, and uh, they are always with us um, because they are where our forebearers, our ancestors. Um, return to after they've done their missions on the earth, and uh, and, and so I, I think one of the the main premise or the, or the benefits of being in nature is that you get attuned to the connection to those sources um, when you're in, in in that place where there's no distraction. It's total connection there. Yeah. And so they they know that they return to those uh, planetary systems or whatever their home planet is. Do they also uh, understand? I mean, I'm not saying this is a fact. I'm just asking you: Is there a belief that they come from there also? Very much so. so. Okay. Very and, much. So. And those and those first five that you listed seem to be very prominent. Seem to be very prominent, uh, especially as time goes on. Andromeda, Sirius, Orion. Uh, Pleiades and Arcturian. Arcturian. Uh, now, in, in terms of the uh, of your uh, your people, you know your heritage, your lineage. Is this something that's 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 passed down uh, to one another through oral tradition, or and or is it something that each one of them experiences on a personal level in terms of communication with the the ancestors from the stars? You're very right there, Todd, because we didn't have a written language. Uh, the Māori people didn't have a written language prior to colonisation before the before the English came. And so everything was passed down oral, or what we call ka nohi ki te ka nohi. It's face-to-face. -face. Um, not every person who um, received that information uh, was given that information. It was only given to certain selected members within a within a hapu within an e, within a tribe or, or or what we call an iwi um we're given that information and then the 
for the benefit of being able to pass that information on to the next generation and on to the next generation. <clears throat> yeah. Um, so uh, that again is still used now, but because of the uh, the the uh, confluence of of what occurred during um, uh, the settling of of, of, of of the invasion factions of, of the British that came to Aotearoa, um, that was totally crushed. It was not permitted. To, the language was not allowed to be spoken in our country. So that meant that that stopped the ability of, of our priests or what we call our tohungas, our wise elders, ability to passing that information down to the next generation and to the next generation uh, was outlawed. Yeah. But over the last, you know, 15, 20 years or so since it's been legalised to being able to speak Māori again, it's it's flourished the uh, the language, the nature of, of education and the, of, of, of the spiritual aspects of, 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 of Māorihood, Māori-dim, um, in such a way that... Um, we are seeing a, a growth in, in not just in Māori learning the Māori language, but in all people learning the Māori language because we are all one people, no matter where yeah. we come from in the world. Yeah. Um, equal, equally so, if, if, you know, for example, me being here in a Spanish-speaking country, um, should I ever want to learn the customs and cultures here, then that uh, enables me to be able to do that and learn and um, uh, and 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 see the connections and the similarities. How strong those similarities are between those ancient customs and cultures. Mm. Does does the tribe have? Uh, I mean, is part of their uh, uh, oral tradition handed down have to do with visitation um, from uh, the star families? There is. There yeah. is, and I think that's exactly the same within our um, uh, our and other cultures and and, yeah. and our other cousins around the world. Also, is that um, not only is the um, knowing and the accepting of the of of the knowledge and wisdom that comes from um, those we call them angels or guides or um, um, uh, esoterical uh, family who who are wanting to bring direction. Uh, that that I think it's important that we find a place within our meditative states, within our, our realms of communion, where we can allow ourselves to enhance that connection, to allow that facilitation to take place. Yeah, and so um, uh, that structure is all part of that um, that growth that we're seeing now from from people that are seeing the themselves caught in the matrix. The matrix meaning, uh, for those who don't know what the matrix might be, uh, the matrix is where we get caught into a system of this is how we're meant to be educated. This is what it means to be a success. This is what it means to be uh, uh, living a truthful, happy life is to, to, to get a high paying job, to buy a house, to have a mortgage, to have a picket fence, to go to church on a Sunday, um, to retire at a certain age, be it 65 or 70 years of age with an enormous nest of money at the end of it after you've yeah. worked. To, worked to, your, yeah, to pay for so your that, funeral. Yeah, to, to pay, pay for your to, funeral before you can leave. <laughs> <laughs> and so that's what we call that's what we call the matrix. And yeah. uh, um, but again, this is all an illusion. Yeah, yeah. It's all, a, and um, and I, I spoke tricks ten years ago before before my heart stopped. Um, yeah. And I un unconsciously thought that I was on the right track. Yeah. And uh, it's okay. not until you jump off a cliff and smash your head against a rock, then you come back. Uh, uh, with 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 your um your eyes wide and realize that um there is a better way to live sometimes it takes four or five jumps because <laughs> i got scars all over my head 
Uh, oh, I mean, some of the biggest <laughs> souls do have the biggest scars. Yeah. So the, and they're, the, and they're uh, on top of scars. Right. So the uh, uh, now one more thing on the galactic connection. If you just take someone like you, for example, you know, I guess at the end of the day, uh, we are all one. We're all the same. However, however, our physical lineage occurred and all that stuff. Uh, but is it is it without giving away whatever you can't give away? Because uh, we have total respect for your heritage and, and whatever whatever that the traditions are. Uh, but to understand a little bit more about your culture, uh, your family, um, is there, is it part of, of uh, the daily life, the lifestyle, uh, I don't know, uh, to connect to the Star family? I don't mean every single day, but I mean, is that something that is, that is part of the culture, part of the life, the, the uh, indigenous culture? It is part, or, part of the law. Or is, yeah, yeah. But it should, but it should be. I mean, it should be. Uh, I, I mean, uh, we're not. We're not. When I say culture, what is culture? Um, you know, is, is, is culture the fact that um, someone is a, a Turkish or someone is from um, uh, Brazil, someone is from Asia, someone is from yeah. India? But then again, what is a culture when we're looking at the word or the definition of culture from a from a non-physical point of view of what culture really means? Because culture yeah. comes from a place of love. And I think there is a there is a there there is a very definitive line between what what a culture is in regards to um where you were raised and how you were raised in a culture yeah. as opposed to the culture of of, of oneness mm -hmm. of knowing of acceptance mm -hmm. and guidance and uh if if we can also understand that there are two facets to what a culture is yeah culture and i believe that we are a culture of of, of of who we are, where did we come from, and where we will return to? Because this life, this physical life here that we're having at the moment, is just one snapshot of a multitude of lifetimes or or experiences in in our in our non physical worlds. Then. And so I think it's important that we we acknowledge that fact that we are just taking a, a slither of, of that piece of uh, life experience in this in this earthly life as being one, one of many. Yeah. If you yeah. can if you can understand where we're coming from. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And that's coming into play more and more every day as we're all expanding this collective consciousness, expanding the multidimensionality. Uh, yeah. One, one last question on, on, uh, the tribe, uh, cause I know it's, if not the oldest, one of the oldest, uh, at least known to us, um, in the world, in history, in terms of still being, still being here. <clears throat> what's the, what's the role of the masculine and the feminine in the Maori tribe? Is that is going to make me talk for a while on the subject, Todd. That's okay. Uh, we've traveled a long way. I mean, all of, all where civilization came from on the earth we're talking about is we, we started somewhere on the earth. I'm, I'm talking about that it's a Neolithic era, Paleolithic era. We all came from a particular place. Um, some some say that that place was in the Garden of Eden. Some say it was in this place where we now know is called Gobleki Tepe, which is in the east of, of Turkey, which is where I'm, we're do, doing a, a Far East tour to, to that part of, of the world um, later this year. And so the, 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 the interesting aspect of, of this particular place called Gobleki Tepe is that this was discovered in the 1930s by a German archaeologist 
who was contacted by these farmers who had found these artifacts growing in their olive orchards at that particular time. And, and when he came to study, he started scratching around and when these tools were made that he discovered that they were over 12 and even as old as 80,000 years old. Yeah. So we're talking about a civilization that was 8,000 years older than the Egyptian pyramids yeah. in, in this part of the world called Gobleki Tepe. And having the, um, the, the blessing of being able to go there ourselves only several months ago, um, I felt like I knew this place after I'd been there. I, I had this profound connection of, of when, I, when we got there and to know that this, this civilization was so era in that time that as the, as the city started to grow, people then started to move and become nomadic. Some traveled west, some traveled south, some traveled north, and some traveled east. Mm. And for those that traveled east were members of our Maori people, although we weren't Maori people at the time when we left Gobleki Tepe, just like the, our Native American cousins who, who arrived in America, they weren't Native Americans. They, they were from Gobleki Tepe also. Those who lived in Scandinavia had come from Gobleki Tepe also. Those who had lived in, um, in, in places near France and Spain and Europe, and the Olds, again, they came from Gobleki Tepe. Those people who, uh, who settled in North Africa and beyond, uh, they weren't called Egyptians or, or Libyans or Moroccans. They also came from Gobleki Tepe. So um, the, the profound, fascinating thing about this um, civilization, once it was unearthed, is that it was into the public two years ago. So um, it was one blessing, incredible um, experience to go there, knowing that it had only just been opened. But it was only, it's going to take 150 years before this um excavation is completed that's how big this civilization is in Gobleki Tepe wow so to answer the other part of your question is um that knowledge held on to tightly I I I I I I believe so. I mean how 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 our, our Maori women have these um, tattooed designs on Maori designs on their chins. We call moko. Um, when we go to the far east of Turkey, do you see these old women with these tattooed Maori designs on their chin? And wow. you know that when they look at you in the eye and they say, "Your people came from here," you know when they look you in the eye and tell you that. But believe every single word that they're saying because when i'm looking at their moko on their chins on their you know 12 20 000 years prior it just blows me away to think that we've been able to keep hold of the, those uh, the the cultures and heritage of of, of of something that's thousands and thousands and thousands of year old years old and we've carried it all the way through asia and the same again goes for the uh, those who traversed over um, Siberia, Alaska, Canada, Central America, and down into South America. That they were also being able to um, hold closely those those beliefs that they've they've brought with them from a place such as Gobleki Tepe. And I think this is why places such as our um, in Peru, for example. There, there's such an energetic drive for many of those soul seekers to to who are being drawn to going to places such as uh, Peru uh, to to learn more of, um, of of what they discover there in Machu Picchu, and also to going to other places like Lake Bacal, which is in in um, in 
uh, Siberia and also to Gobliki Tepe and the Far East Turkey. So it, it, it's something that that draws a lot of these awakened souls into wanting to go to the adventuring to these places. Egypt is another. We're drawn to to need to help them to understand more of who they are. Yeah. Yeah, that makes that's fascinating. I didn't know uh you you had all that information. <laughs> that's very cool. And it makes sense too because uh if if I'm not uh mistaken if you look into and we well, we would go back a few thousand years uh, if I'm not mistaken Turkey uh was like the center uh of all trade wasn't it did everything went in and went through turkey uh from the different uh the different parts of the world at least at that time it was a big trade it seems yeah it seemed to i mean uh, even even prior to the the of the building of the what they call the silk road um it, it seemed to be a intersection where the asian uh, Asian nations connected with European and we're able to trade and vice versa yeah. as well. Too. And the North African, yeah. So yeah. North Africa also. And so when we hear about these uh, lands such as Mesopotamia, Anatolia, uh, Cappadocia, you know, those lands were centered in Turkey. Those lands are in yeah. Turkey. And so <laughs> Turkey is, is where many of the ancient historians believe is where man can, man, mankind began. Yeah. And so I yeah, find it extremely profound going there. Yeah. Yeah. That's uh, and that, and you're saying that uh, this city that I can't pronounce, <laughs> it's going to take 150 years to excavate. Uh, that's approximately what? 80,000 years old. Is that what you they say that it's, that's they say that it can, it can it, it'll, it'll be anywhere between, uh, 12,000 and 80,000 years old, that's how, mm. uh, that's how old it is. And that's how large this uh, civilization that lived in that mm. period um, mm. was. So name Todd, it's Gobliki Tepe. <laughs> <laughs> Not on camera. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I want to go back to your, your near-death experience. Uh, it's been a while. It's been a few months since uh, you came on and talked about it. Don't, we don't have to go as in depth, but there was not just the uh, the sequence of the physical events that happened, but also the the uh, I guess the dialogue you were having uh, as it was occurring. Uh, could you just kind of take us through that again? It was um, it's it's just over ten years now since it happened. Uh, a lot of water has gone under the bridge at that particular time. Um, I, I think the memories of of of, uh, of that uh, of that experience and that journey um, stay with me now every single day. Um, not a day goes by where I'm not standing with my feet firmly in that realm of connection to our our our, our native uh, divine stately places of, of 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 where we came from you know and we're talking about those dimensions beyond the fourth dimension um and uh sometimes i get homesick um but when I'm not, I'm always carrying in my heart the connection of, of knowing that um, uh, the our guides or my guides, each of us, all of us have guides, um, are always betting for us and for the viewers. Um, and knowing that when we're going through struggles in our lives, um, uh, they're there with us shining a light a beam of light and, and a torch for us and and where we should be going and i think the only way that we can find about what our path is and uh the divinity of, of what our path should be must come from a place of where we spend our time in, in meditating 
their solitude and solace um, in, in nature is one of them. Uh, being able to just to disconnect ourselves from, from the maddening world. And here I am speaking here from the middle of an incredibly busy city with 13 million people. Um, just being able to find that space where we can connect with those guys and just to put our complete trust and faith that um, once we dispel it or get rid and clear away the, the, the ego or the ravages of the ego, which, which I refer to as evading the godly order, uh, we don't want to evade the godly order. We, we, um, so for those who are evading the godly order um, are, 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 are entrenched in their ego, and that is a prison. Uh, yeah. That is incredibly yeah. um, challenging for many people, and it takes an enormous amount of courage of being able to let go of their fears of security and safety. Um, we 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 and comfort particularly. I mean, yeah. if, if um, this is what holds a lot of people back is is this illusion that they've got to be comfortable, that they've got to feel secure. To live a happy life, but what it is, it's actually a prison. Yeah, and it, it, and yeah. so uh, if we can uh, if we can work our way through and just being able to just live with the very very simple things in our lives and realizing I'm still happy, I'm still I'm still uh, living in in in, in this um, acceptance of of not having to live with expensive things to having luxury in our lives because things that we've always got to, they, they have an expiry date. So we've got to earn more money to, 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 to buy something to that once it's outdated, that, that uh, replaces it. Yeah. Nature doesn't replace nature always remains nature. The, um, and, and the sky never changes. Moons and the moon and the stars, they never change. And so if we're looking for comfort and security, it should always come from the simple things in life that are given to us without any uh, expectations of, of them expecting anything back from us. And this is a beautiful thing about God is that they're not expecting anything back from us, but they're always searching for us. They're always looking to to um, helping us and to assisting us. And um, but we've got to spend that quiet time of solitude, of meditative communion, not just with ourselves, but also with like-minded souls in that connective space, whether it's drumming, whether it's playing music, whether it's just being under the stars, whether it's just being in nature, um, whether it's just holding hands, whether it's just singing, whether it's chanting, whether it's praying, and just enjoying the essence of the power that comes from that collective consciousness of, of oneness is where, where we begin, where our yeah. commencement of our life begins. And, um, and so that's what our job is as light beings, is being able to touch a soul, to touch a soul, and to help those who have got one foot in the matrix and their other foot in this esoterical, adventurous, mystical world, and they're not too quite sure about. And so it's our role really just to help them that it's all okay and trust in the faith and build on that faith that, that everything will be fine if you just let go of the matrix and, yeah. and, and, and walk the same path that this growing you know we can see now this growing collective consciousness is this wave is growing and growing and growing in the world now because i mean the world is getting madder it's becoming more chaotic um, it's becoming more rigid in their beliefs and you hit an egg hard enough it's going to pop yeah. and uh we've we've had we've had we've, we've had too many souls that have been hit, hit like all of us uh, so many times that um, we don't want to live like that anymore. We want no. to live in, in purity. Yeah. Yeah. And get beyond the illusion of the guarantee. <laughs> and beyond that and beyond that yeah. as well, because this, because yeah. this is where, uh, this is where adventure lies also is, is being able to step out of the matrix. 
because when we hold on to comfort and security, there is no adventure. Yeah. We've got to learn to let it go. And then all the doors of abundance and adventure just open up. Yeah. That's the, uh, the whole uh, recipe for expansion is going into the unknown. I don't think any of this really got started unknown. without it. <laughs> Mother Universe was up there saying, I wonder if what would happen if. <laughs> it's only one way to find out. Yeah. Put yeah. the trust in our guides and, our, yeah. and into ourselves as well. Uh, now, you've written, how many books have you written? Two books? Two okay. books. Yes, two, right? As in, and you, there's one one other coming out this year. I'm also doing some oracle cards, which are coming out later this year also. Okay. So I, I knew that there was the two, and now, and you mentioned earlier that you're doing some writing now. Is that is that for the book, the what you're doing now, the new book? The new book, yeah. Putting that yeah. together. Um, yeah. Uh, that one's called 18 Days Alone in the Wilderness, and it just um, talks about uh, one of the experiences that I spent alone in the wilderness for, for a period of time. And 18 and days? All, all alone. All alone. In New yeah. Zealand? In, in uh, the same place? Same place. Mm. With the possums and the deers and everything. <laughs> By and, the noise, and the noises at night and everything, yeah. Well, that sure. would be fascinating. Yeah. That would be fascinating. That would be so. That was fascinating. that was a real joy to um, to to write that particular story and um, and um, many of the fears that I held at that prior to doing that um, that journey um, uh, um, they all they all dissolved. To be honest, once I embarked on that journey. Wow. When do you see that coming out? When do you think you'll be launching that? Uh, looking around about the time of when the Far East Turkey tour uh, begins. So it'll, the book will probably come out around about um, September, October this year. Yeah. Yeah. And are you going to be going to uh, Gobek Le Tepe? <laughs> Beautiful, Todd. You, <laughs> you got it. <laughs> I just tuned into the morphic field of uh linguistics <laughs> universal linguistics um so you're gonna you're gonna be going back there are you gonna go back uh to gobliki tepe yes uh we're looking at going to uh gobliki tepe is, is is probably one of the highlights of this particular tour yeah. um so if anyone is interested in coming on this tour they can just send us uh, a message uh, just a PM message to us and we can send out some information. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we're looking at starting off at a retreat in uh, Bodrum and for about two or three days before we head off, just so people can kind of relax from having jet lag and so on, mm -hmm. so on because they're coming from all corners of the world. And then we'll do some uh, meditation, some sound healing vibration and work, and then, and then we'll fly off to Adana, uh, and then we'll commence our journey there. We'll go and see some mosques, some churches, some places of um, biblical history of some uh, Muslim. And then we'll go on to uh, Antakya, which is in the south, which lies kind of almost on the border of, um, of Syria, which is a beautiful city there. Um, there's a cave there, which... Uh, which really astounded me when uh, when we went there. Which was uh, which when you walk inside this cave, it feels like you're inside a church. And and in actual fact, this was the place where Jesus met with all his disciples for the very first time. Wow! And that was powerful. You know, just to just to imagine what it must have been like when Jesus called all these disciples to be here at this particular point in time. And where they all got to meet one another as well as Jesus himself. And when you walk inside this um, this beautiful, beautiful church, which is actually inside a cave, but it looks like a church inside, you just feel the energy uh, of this place uh, there in Antakya. From there, we then move on to uh, a place called Shan Lufa, which is called the City of Prophets. And uh, we'll go also on to some of the um, the places of history in, in that particular region. And then we move on to uh, a place called Haran, 
which is uh, where they say the Garden of Eden was. And uh, so we'll, uh, we'll meet uh, some wonderful people there who welcome you there onto, onto their land and to um, their, they still live in the old traditional Arabic ways. Uh, they have camels, so you have the opportunity to spend some time with them and, and listen to some of their sharing. And then we move on to uh, to uh, Nimrod Da, which is in the mountains, in the high mountains, actually. Um, even though it's going to be near the end of summer, we're so high in the mountains in this particular region to go and visit these heads. You don't know how these enormous rock-carved heads were carried up to the top of these mountains, uh, these enormous structures um, of... of, of I think there's something like about 12, 12 of these um, these symbols that are uh, at this place called Nimrod. Uh, you do have to walk around about an hour or, hour or so uh, up this mountain track to get to this particular place. Uh, but once you get there, the the it's just captivating. It's just incredibly wow. powerful there. And then we move on to Rumi, uh, to uh, Konya. And to go and visit Rumi's temple and to also see the whirling dervishes. We can go to Cappadocia. We might do a we'll do a balloon tour. Uh in the early morning we'll we'll go on a mass ascension on a balloon trip and then we'll go back to Istanbul. And then after that two weeks is over, we go back, everyone flies back from Istanbul. That's awesome, man. That's that's absolutely incredible. You got uh, some of Jesus, some of Rumi, whirling dervishes. So you got some Sufi Islam in there. Some, well, you know, based on the labels we have, Christianity. Yeah, that that's a uh, that's fascinating. That's a that's a fascinating uh, tour. So are you going to be putting that together? I noticed you just put another page up. Uh, can you just tell people who want to reach out to you and get get information on your books? Um, can you tell us where we can find you, where we can find your books and information on the tour or anything like that? Um, the information on the tour is going to be um, put out as soon as we get back. Uh, we've also had a big interest already since um, since it's been going out verbally of um, people wanting to come onto the tour. We can only take so many on this particular tour. Um, so if, if people can get in as soon as they possibly can, um, just even just with um, um, that, just just to send us a flick us an email to say that they're interested, then we can put them into the into the into the list uh, before it fills up. But we're um, more at Gmail is our email. It's H U R A M for Mary U A at Gmail, and. Uh, and if you can if you can just say Far East Turkey too, I'm interested, just pop your name and we'll send out some information by email to you. Um, we'll also be sending out um, an, um, an information pack out and we'll send it out via email to everybody and also through our means through Facebook and through other means from uh, through Instagram as well also. So uh, once we get back to Turkey, we'll, we'll, we'll fire all that information out to everybody. Very cool. Very cool. And so, and keep us informed and we have to get you back on, especially as we ramp up towards the book. Uh, but anything you've got coming out, let us know so we can uh, support you and expanding awareness for what you, you and your beautiful divine partner are doing. And uh, like I said, as soon as I get my stuff cleared up, I'll be joining you at some point in time. I'm not, I'm not concerned about it as to when that happens. Cause I know it will. Thank you so much for coming on. Hone and uh, teach me some uh, vocabulary. <laughs> yeah, educated me. We've got. Thank you so uh, much. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. It, we got a big day today. Uh, we got Natalie Gotchi in another hour. She's a musical performer. Lives in New York. She's from Australia, I believe. Uh, we've got uh, interesting brother Jan Lemuri, who communicates with the dolphins. And uh, he's an international speaker. He's going to be uh, uh, coming on a couple hours later. And then Mitch Jameson, a young brother from down under, is going to join us. So we'll see you again, honey, soon. Uh, and we'll coordinate something else. Uh, keep us posted. And thank you so much. God bless. Peace. Yeah. Peace. Bless, bless you. Thank too, you, everybody. Bro. Bye. Take, you take care. And be sure and put.